Keith Park's messing with the fish. Hey, I'm going to go over the live scope uh, holder or handle rather that I use for my transducer whenever I'm uh, deploying it down into the water. Uh, I drop it down about a foot, foot and a half underneath, and I, I put it on the side of my boat. I've got a big center console, and it's 21 foot, and right now this is how I'm using it. Now, I've only had this system maybe a month, so I may change it. I may put one up front or whatnot, but uh, stay tuned, and I'll show you guys uh, how I've installed it and in, in some of the parts that I've used. Hey, Keith Park's messing with the fish. Listen, I'm going to go do a little quick, uh, give you guys an idea of what I'm using for my transducer holder for my Garmin Live Scope. Now, I didn't come up with this. I, I've, I've read and watched tons of videos and read information. And in a nutshell, this is what I come up with. And I will show you here. Uh, I bought these little clips off Amazon so I can stow it so when I'm not using it and over here you can see the transducer will turn inside of it so it's pretty neat and also right here this is just a big ram mount that's what I use the ball for now it's not pretty I'm gonna do something else here eventually but what I'm about to do is I'm about to put a sleeve on the transducer cable now here's what's important they say do not use zip ties shouldn't use these also if you're going to mount it on a trolling motor they say to split the cable and they send you a little plastic piece you can use to split the cable i haven't split the cable and i haven't had any problems with it i've been out several times with this system um, of course you can uh, go out there's a lot of different ones on the market there's a new one that's a remote controlled one it's about 900 bucks uh, I probably got $25 in materials on this, not counting the $100 RAM mount, of course. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to put this protective cover, and I bought this from Amazon as well. I buy everything from Amazon, just FYI. What I do is it's just a sheathing I'm going to put around this cable, just to protect it a little farther. And uh, it's pretty cool. I'll get it set up, and then I'll uh, show you how it works here. Hold tight. Again, this is what it looks like when it's stowed. I mean, this thing's not going anywhere with these grips. No matter how rough the lake gets, it's not happening. Then you just simply pull these two things up, pop, pop. You put it inside of the gimbal mount, slide it around, and bam, you're ready to go. And again, here's the sheathing. I didn't use zip ties, decided against it, so I'm strictly using tape. Two pieces of tape right there, that's all I've used. Okay, so basically it's a pretty simple design. Again, you can Google this or YouTube, check it on YouTube, but it turns. The inside of this is going to turn while the outside is not. It just it fits perfectly in there. And I just colored one end of this blue because that's which way uh, the transducer is going to be looking. And again, here's the ram mount right here. You can see how it goes. It goes all the way down to the transducer. And my water level line, as you can tell here, I need to wash my boat obviously a little bit, but it comes up to about right here. Now, the sheaving I was talking about, and this was my idea actually, I came up with one. Woohoo! But anyway, this is, I think this will help protect this cord. Uh, apparently, this cord's got several tiny wires in it and some tape. I'll be using some black tape here to to put it on with. But anyway, just want to do a little quick video and that way the transducer, all you got to do is click it a couple of times if you're wanting to look forward or down. Uh, very easy to do and again I showed you where I stowed it with these handy dandy little clips here and uh, that's all. Hey, peace out. If you're not fishing, you're not catching.